Call this meeting to order. Let the record show that the entire council is present. Also, the city administrator is present, and the city clerk is recording the minutes. If you would all please join the city council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the next item up, uh, nothing under general, nothing under, oh, is um, public comment. Mr. Sharman, do you have anything associated with the school board? Uh, people will note that in the uh, city calendar, they have a joint workshop set up. It's still on the calendar for the 20th, meaning this Wednesday. It is not going to happen. The workshop will be on the 16th of December here in City Hall here, from what I understand, what I've just learned. So that's the, that's the 16th. If there will be no workshop on this 20th. There is a school board meeting, but no workshop. Thank you. Uh, but no, no joint workshop, I'm sorry, between. Thank you. Um, Kelly Archer, please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. My name's uh, Kelly Archer, uh, 185 Bradley Street, chair of the HPC. I just have a uh, question for clarification. Once you get to the historic preservation section, uh, F on your planning yep. packet for tonight, um, when, when there is a uh, motion put forward, I just want to make sure if I understand it correctly, it says I move to approve historic preservation section at Article 19 of the proposed zoning ordinance. Will that include the amendments of 19, uh, the new section 1912B and 1912E? Because in the draft itself, draft three, it doesn't reflect that language, but it does on in your packet on a amendment. I just want to make sure that the motion includes that um, 1912B and 1912E, um, since this is the first time we've ever gone through this process, and um, and then. Uh, if you could just give us the code of when something gets adopted. We're not used to this um, over, overdoing the whole ordinance. So when do I start using the new section, new article versus the old code? Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin, do you have um, any clarification? Sure. Or I see Ord Emily ordinances is under our charter are 30 days from when they're enacted. Right, so it'll be 30 days after the vo if the vote is approved tonight, it'll be 30 days from now. The question about uh, sections B and E, uh, I'd have to turn to either oh, our city Denise planner or our director of planning and So, Ms. Clavette, could you come forward, please? <laughs> she doesn't know what she's in here for. Maybe, <laughs> or yeah. I'm sorry, or uh, Ms. Prescott, perhaps. Uh, she doesn't know what the question was. So the question is uh, whether or not page 81 in the packet is part of the motion related to the Historic Preservation Commission vote or not. Right. I mean, this can be, I, we can look to address this when we get to that, when we get to the item on the agenda. Maybe we can address it then. Sure. Sure. I believe your comment is included. Is it included or not? I believe it is. But okay. All right. Please check on that for uh, once, uh, uh, once Councillor Johnston makes that uh, motion. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion on accepting the, on putting the consent agenda on the floor? So moved. So I have a motion by Councillor Minthorn. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Councillor Gay. Uh, the motion is to uh, put the consent agenda on the, uh, on the floor, made by Councillor Minthorn, seconded by Councillor Gay. Uh, does any councillor wish to have any uh, item in the consent agenda removed from the consent agenda? To my right, seeing none. To my left, seeing none. Um, so, Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Gay? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor Smart? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. The motion to accept the consent agenda passes 7-0.
Uh, first item up uh, is um, uh, item A on the agenda, Council Archer. Do you have a motion? Uh, we do. The Code Enforcement Department uses several vehicles to get us to our inspections in the course of the day. One of those vehicles, the 2009 Ford Crown Victoria Police Vehicle, has started incurring significant repair bills and needs further work, including brakes. With the addition of Irish Griffith and multi-family inspection program, as well as several additional field listers and assessing department, we find ourselves in need of one replacement vehicle and one additional staff vehicle to be shared between codes and assessing. We have priced out two vehicles as directed by the City Council on 11 12 19, one 2020 all wheel drive Toyota Prius at 24,752, and uh, one 2020 all wheel drive Toyota RAV4 at $26,357 for a total expenditure of $51,109. Revenue for permits are well ahead of projections. Total revenue as of 10 31 19 is $202,588.74 which is 56.5% of budget where we were at 33% of uh, last fiscal year. Uh, be it ordered the City Council approves the first reading of budget amendment number four, fiscal year 2020, and move to schedule a second and final reading for December 16th, 2019. I move to approve the order. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Archer, seconded by Councilor Johnston. This would increase um, the uh, budget item uh, 10372, or the account 10372, 500321, uh, vehicle, uh, staff vehicle operations by $51,109. And it uh, comes from the uh, line 10350, uh, 3, account 3000. I'm sorry, 300, 800, uh, budgeted use of surplus. Uh, any uh, comments to my right? Seeing none, any comments to my left? Um, seeing none, Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Gay? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor uh, Smart? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. The motion passes 7-0. This will be scheduled for public hearing on the sixth, um, uh, second and final reading on the on uh, the 16th. Do we have a do you have a meeting on the 16th? Isn't that um, um, yes? That's the second Monday. That's yes, the second the 16th Monday of is December. The next. Yes. Yep. Uh, next is the next motion is um, Councillor Copeland. Twelve School Street was purchased on August 27, 2019. This facility will be the home of a teen center on the first floor, and adult and senior programming on the second floor. The Parks and Rec direct. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department strive to ensure that the programs offered are for everyone, and this facility will enhance our community and programs. This facility will start out as a six day a week operation with the teen program running Monday through Saturday. Senior programs will be offered during the daytime and adult programs will be offered in the evening. Once the teen center is up and running strong, we'll be, we will open the facility seven days a week. Um, council, uh, city staff recommends approval. Be it ordered that the City Council approves the first reading of Budget Amendment number, number 5, Fiscal Year 2020, School Street Purchase, and move to schedule a second and final reading for December 16th, 2019. I move to approve the order. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Copeland, second by Councilor Archer. Um, this, again, would uh, increase the budget line uh, purchase of land, account 10640, ob uh, object uh, 50409 by uh, $242,906 uh, and come from the budgeted use of surplus, account uh, 10350, uh, object 300, 800. 
Um, any comments to my right? Seeing none, any comments to my left? <coughs> Councillor Johnston. Um, I don't see Ryan here, but uh, for the city administrator, at a future date, this is, is unrelated to the actual budget amendment, but I'm curious if we can have Ryan present an updated budget for the work that will need to be done there. We'll be looking to bring something forward to the next council. All right, thank you. Any other comments to my left? Any additional to my right? Seeing none, Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Gay? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor Smart? Yes. And Councillor Johnston? Yes. The motion passes 7-0. Uh, next up, Councillor Smart, do you have a motion? I do. The City of Saco's Water Resource Recovery Department recently conducted a study to evaluate improvements to the water resource recovery facility located on Front Street and adjacent to the Saco River. The study is summarized in an August 2019 report by Ty and Bond titled Water Resource Recovery Facility Effluent Pump Station Wet Weather Treatment Improvements and Climate Adaptation Plan. The WRRF's direct proximity to the tidal influenced by Saco, Rivers, Saco River uh, puts this facility at significant risk to the effect of sea level rise, as well as flooding during extreme weather events. Be it ordered that the City Council authorize the City Administrator to approve the tie and bond 30% design proposal for the sum of $280,000. This is to be funded 50% from the CSO impact fees and 50% from sewer impact fees. I move to approve the order. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Smart, seconded by Councilor Menthorn, associated with the Water Resource Recovery Department um, Resiliency Improvements. Uh, any comments to my right? Seeing none. Any comments to my left? Seeing none. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Councillor Smart? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Gay? Yes. And Councillor Archer? Yes. Uh, that motion passes 7 0. And next up is uh, Councillor Copeland. Do you have a motion? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Just a second. No, nope, you are next. Item D, 54. Chapter 4. At the June 10th workshop, members of the Coastal Waters Commission brought forward several changes to Chapter 118 that would strengthen the language in the ordinance and create a harbor master position that would be Maine Criminal Justice Academy, or MCJA, certified. Since that time, the Public Works Director, Police Chief, and Finance Director have reviewed and made additional recommended changes. I believe you're at 118. Uh, this is on Chapter 4, which is the uh, second and final reading. Um, all right, hold on a minute. We're going to adjust that. It's page 50 in the packet. Yep. My apologies. At the June 10th workshop, members of the Coastal Waters Commission brought forward changes <coughs> to Chapter 4, Article 7, Section 39, that would establish a time limit for an appeal of a decision by the Coastal Waters Commission. Staff recommends approval. The city the Saco City Council hereby ordains and approves the second and final reading of amendments to Chapter 4, Administrative Code, Article 7, Section 39. I move to approve the order. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Copeland, seconded by Councilor Menthorn on amending the um, Administrative Code, Article uh, Chapter 4, Article 7, Section 39. Any comments to my right? Seeing none, comments to my left. Seeing none, Councillor Johnston? Yes. Councillor Smart? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Gay? Yes. And Councillor Archer? Aye. 
This motion passes 7-0. Um, and this will take effect in 30 days. Uh, next up, Councilor Copeland. At the June 10th workshop, members of the Coastal Waters Commission brought forward several changes to Chapter 118 that would strengthen the language in the ordinance and create a harbor master position that would be Maine Criminal Justice Academy certified. Since that time, the Public Works Director, Police Chief, and Finance Director have reviewed and made additional recommended changes. Staff recommends approval with further amendments. I move to approve the second and final reading of the document title Amendments to Chapter 118, Harbor River and Waterfront, and further amend Article 1, 118-3 uh, definitions, Harbor Master, changing the words Director of Public Works to SACO Chief of Police, and further replace Chapter 118-4D, Governance on Dock Steward, <coughs> with D, Dock Stewards. There shall be a Dock Stewards from time to time. These individuals will be hired in combination with the HR de Department and the facilities manager. Dock stewards will answer to the facilities manager and receive direction from the harbor master. Dock stewards will be responsible for the safe and orderly execution of daily operations at the pier. Second. <laughs> Councilor Copeland has made a motion, seconded by Councilor Menthorn on um, the uh, Second, approving the second and final reading uh, on changes to uh, chapter 118, including new amendments uh, to uh, definitions, section 118-3, and to, um, um, and also to the governance of the dog steward section, chapter one, yeah, section 118-4D. Any comments to my right? Seeing none, any comments from my left, Councilor Copeland? I would like to call our Chief of Police up and uh, to discuss this a little bit further. Yes, ma'am. Chief. Good evening. Evening. The, I just wanted to bring up to the Council's attention just to make sure that I, we're completely transparent about this. The way that it's written, in that it would be an MCJA certified police officer as the harbor master, I would interpret that to mean that you want me to hire a police officer to do this job. Because the current harbor master is not an MCJA certified police officer. Right. Is it MCJ certified harbor master or MCAJ certified? Well, that's written as MCJA officer. certified police officer. police officer. So it is a police officer, sir. <clears throat> One more officer. Well, well, that's, therein lies the question. So I just want to make sure that. Six months. This is, <clears throat> what's that? Talk about how this is a six month position. Please. Correct. So the, from talking to the current Harbor Master, this position for the most part is full time for six months. So probably March through October, ballpark, March through October, it's pretty much a full time job. Uh, the other six months, it's about five hours a week. So I just want to make sure that the council is aware that, you know, if this is something that's going to be a full-time job, that would mean another police officer and potentially based on talking to the current harbor master, he picks up lobster traps, there's people down there doing cohogs, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I don't have a vehicle that is capable of picking up lobster traps and doing all that stuff, so. So you're saying it's an a police officer and I would a vehicle. Say a police officer and a vehicle. In addition to what we just approved. That's correct. So I just want to make sure that. So I, I would suggest that uh, we table this for now so we can further review this and un get our heads wrapped around the financial, financial uh, implications here. I move to table oh. this. Oh. Uh, let me, on, on yes, table, so, so you want to discuss the tabling motion. Okay, yes, so I have a motion to table. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion to table by Councilor Copeland, seconded by Councilor Gay. Any comments from my left? It's a, it's a motion to table. I oh, it's a motion to table. No, no and comments. And it's not, uh, it's, it's not debatable. Elizabeth. Okay, so. Um, I just was curious if you 
do you lose certification as a police officer? So could you hire a former police officer that's now retired? I, I yeah, I, I mean, I could find somebody. Vote not um, to table it. Attention. It would have to be somebody that could be recertified, yes. There's a the process to go through that, but. Yeah, through the gym, right. Yes. So it's, that would probably be better suited for. So we have a motion to table, and this will be discussed at a later time. So uh, the motion to table, we'll take it off the table on uh, December 16th. So. Um, can we workshop it? Yes. Certainly can. Um, so uh, the motion to table, it comes off the table on December 16th. So. And at um, that point, the, the police chief can give us some more firm numbers? Well, presumably on the 9th, it would get workshop. It depends on the new council, the new mayor. Sure. Um, but that, at that point, it could be workshopped for discussion and then come before the council in its next scheduled meeting after the workshop, which would be the 16th of December. It, Mr. Mayor, yeah. the problem is, is the timing for an ordinance change will be too far from the public hearing, so you'd have to go through this whole process anyway. So tabling the item isn't, doesn't make sense. You can vote it down, the new council will be coming in, and they can take it back up as a new item. Sure. So can I get a second to withdraw a second? Yes, sir. Can I get you to withdraw your tabling motion? Withdrawn. So at this point, we're voting on the motion. Um, so, Councillor um, Johnston. No. Councillor Smart. No. Councillor Minthorn. No. Councillor Copeland. No. Councillor Doyle. No. Councillor Gay. No. And Councillor Archer. No. The motion fails, zero seven. Thank you very much. Next up, Councillor Johnston, do you have a motion? All that work for nothing. As written in detail in the background of the City Council item commentary on the second and final reading, vote on historic preservation section article 19, this abbreviated and excerpted section will be read from the background of the complete item commentary. Background beginning with, on February 20th, 2018, the City Council voted to adopt the 2018 update of Sackler's Comprehensive Plan. The 2018 Comp Plan update was the result of nearly two years of review and discussion by the Ad Hoc Committee and the City Staff. The community's next step was to update the zoning ordinances to align with the City's land use vision. The most forward-thinking land use policies in the State of Maine that ensures financial stability, environment, environmental sustainability, and provides opportunities and accessibility to all. Uh, continuing the background through the following excerpts, the draft three of the zoning ordinances then went to planning board public hearing on October 22nd, 2019, where over 50 people attended and provided valuable input, valid concerns and comments. The Historic Preservation Commission held a public hearing on October 22nd, where several people attended. The planning board continued the zoning ordinances discussion at their October 29th meeting heard additional public comments and approved a draft report to go to the City Council for acceptance the same evening as the public hearing to be held at the City Council meeting on November 4th, 2019. At that October 29th meeting, the Planning Board directed staff to review the new recommendations for revisions and report back to the Planning Board at their November 5th, 2019 meeting. The City Council held their public hearing for the proposed revised zoning ordinances on November 4th, 2019. After the public hearing was closed, the City Council voted to refer the zoning, site plan, and subdivision ordinances and the zoning map back to the Planning Board. The City Council moved to send the historic preservation section of the zoning ordinance that received a positive recommendation from the Planning Board to the second and final reading and vote of approval and to set that date for November 18th, 2019. The third draft, the proposed land use ordinances are available and contain historic preservation, historic preservation section Article 19 of the zoning ordinance. Staff recommends that the City Council approve the Historic Preservation Section Article 19 of the proposed zoning. I move to approve Historic Preservation Section Article 19 of the proposed zoning ordinance. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Smart, second by Councilor, I'm sorry, a motion by Councilor Johnston, seconded by Councilor Smart. Uh, and bef um, before we go any further, so uh, Ms. Clavett or Ms. Prescott, uh, you want to answer the question that came up earlier 
associated with um, um, section 19 or chapter? Article or cha 19. Article 19, section 12. Section 1912, so 12A and B. All of the information has been updated and corrected and is part of the packet, yes. So that is, so it is there as part of that packet? Yes, it is. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I see none, but let me ask the council, any questions for planning to my left? Any questions for planning to my right, seeing none? No, thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments to my right on adopting Article 19 of the of the code as a modification? Any to my left? Seeing none, we're looking at the adoption of Article 19. Um, Councilor Archer. Aye. Councilor Gay. Yes. Councilor Doyle. Yes. Councilor Copeland? Yes. Councilor Minthorn? Yes. Councilor uh, Smart? Yes. And Councilor um, Johnston? Yes. The motion passes 7 0. Uh, this was the second and final reading, and so that is adopted. Um, next up is the administrative update. Mr. Sutherland. So two items looking forward. The inauguration is December 2nd um, at 6.30 at Thornton Academy. A lot of the details are following and we'll be sending out a save the date uh, ideally tomorrow uh, with an evite and also some Facebook invitations to the public. Um, we'll be providing all that information for the counselors to send out to their um, respective constituents, friends and family. Um, I also, given that this is the final uh, meeting of this council with action items, I wanted to identify several of the things that this group has accomplished, and <clears throat> you should be very proud of yourself. Uh, I've broken them into a couple of categories. I call it brokering real estate. So we sold lot 14 uh, in Spring Hill Industrial Park. We also sold in the Millbrook Business Park lot three, four, seven, and nine. So five parcels that the city owned have been sold off for business development. We purchased land to create a new business park because there are only two more spots that remain in Millbrook. We purchased land for a public works facility and with that will come additional business park locations. And uh, we also purchased, just tonight we moved the money to purchase the downtown um, parcel for the teen center and additional programming space for parks and rec. We built stronger teams. We confirmed the appointment of Ryan Summer as Director of Parks and Recreation and Jack Clements as the Chief of Police. And, in, in, and while in office, um, we've seen some of the transitions in administrative functions such as the Director of Planning and Development and City Planner and the creation of a Communications Director position. This council has also approved six union contracts, in fact seven because we did the fire twice. So that is a very time consuming endeavor and I'm, I'm very proud of this group for working through those. Uh, I think it'll be the next council that gets to go through again, so uh, look forward to that. Welcoming businesses, we had contract zone amendment and, exp and extension for um, the uh, ecology school on Simpson Road. We had amendments to MU3, I1, I2, and I3 to accommodate uh, businesses like Ready Seafood. We've amended all seven TIF districts to optimize their use and we created a new one to assist Ready Seafood and to pay for the sewer debt along Route 1 modified the role of the Economic Development Commission and strengthened its, its uh, role in assisting staff for reaching economic development goals by amending the ordinance that governs the committee. And we paved the way with amendments to, extensions to, and, or creations of contract zones with the hope that they will go away with the update to the zoning, should be in front of the next council in due time, for Convenient MD, Hancock Lumber, and Biddeford Saco Dental Associates. We protected Saco, updates to the city charter, to create greater clarity, gender neutrality, and staggering the council terms, two years of budgets with a flat tax rate, update to the single-use bag ordinance, the beach management agreement and updates to city codes allowing for the placement of dredged sand from the Saco River onto the Camp Ellis Beach. We've had the blasting ordinance. We've enhanced the seniors' citizen tax relief program, uh, and we've 
even create an ordinance for tobacco, tobacco free zones. Um, and tonight I had hoped we would have moved forward with a harbor river and ordinance, water ordinance, waterfront ordinance, but we'll uh, bring that to the next council. Those are the items I was able to pull together. I'm, there was a lot more that this council has accomplished, but I think those are really some overarching things that this group has uh, achieved and you should be very proud of yourselves. So thank you for your service. So any comments on the administrative update to my right, to my left? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Hughes, on, uh, in the uh, matter of chapter 118, um, Councillor Johnston was making a point of information and that Mr. Sutherland was making a point of clarification. And so that's how that uh, motion to table got resolved. Uh, the next up is council discussion and comment. Any council discussion? Councillor Gay, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make sure this is being televised. Um, I had a couple constituents call me about last week's not being televised. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen Andrew. Is he here today? He's here. Yes. He okay, good. I believe last week was a workshop. And last week was a workshop. Um, excuse me. I saw him. A special meeting. There was a special meeting. That's true. And that wasn't televised. That's right. Any other comments to my right? Councillor Archer. Uh, yes, as the last meeting of the council, I just want to say uh, thank you to the mayor, Councillor, where is he at? Councillor Smart and Councillor Gay for your service to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments to my right? Seeing and none. since I have the floor Excuse still, me. just I have to say it's the 90th birthday of both Mickey and Minnie Mouse. That's exactly right. Yes, it is. And to my left, council comment discussion. Any comment or discussion to my left? Councillor Smart. I, I just wanted to say I saw somebody moving up there behind the, the oh, window. Okay. So, and I think they were given a thumbs up. So I think oh, okay. we are recording. And, <laughs> Good. Uh, Good. and I just wanted to All say right. thank you uh, to everybody again for this opportunity. It's been um, a wonderful pleasure. And enlightening. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to and I would like to recognize the city staff that is is here this evening, in addition to Mr. Sutherland and Ms. Hughes, we have the Director of Economic Development and Planning, Ms. Clavett, Mr. Fox, the Director of Public Works, the Fire Chief, Mr. Uh, Chief Duros, the Deputy Police Chief, Mr. Huntress, our Planner, Ms. Prescott, our Water Resource Recovery Department Head, Mr. Carter, our Code Enforcement department head, Mr. Lambert, and our finance director, Ms. Salas. Thank you all for being here. Uh, next is uh, going into executive session. And um, before we do that, let's have a, a brief recess. And uh, then we'll go in with um, attorney um, McGill. So uh, we're in recess for Five minutes. Oh, call exec oh. motion first. I'm sorry. Can you put the motion up? Oh, motion to go into recess. Oh, oh, to go into uh, executive, executive session. session. Yes. So, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Mr. Mayor, be it ordered, the City Council enter into executive session pursuant to MRSA Title One, Chapter Thirteen, Subchapter One, Section Four Hundred Five Six A, City Administrator Search. Uh, no, it's actually Six C. It's a it's a contract negotiation. Um, we're not going to talk about Mr. Sutherland, who is an employee, uh, A covers employee, C is contract negotiation. Error in the agenda. Exactly right. So do I have so a motion moved. to go into uh, executive Second. session under subparagraph C? So moved. Thank you very much. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Minthorn, seconded by Councillor Johnston, to go into executive session under contract negotiation. Any comments to my left? Seeing none. Any comments to my right? Seeing none. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Gay? Yes. Councillor Doyle? Yes. Councillor Copeland? Yes. Councillor Minthorn? Yes. Councillor Smart? Yes. And Councillor Johnston? Yes. Uh, we're now in executive session.
the meeting back to order. Do I have a motion to come out of executive session? Yes, be it ordered City Council, exit executive session pursuant to MRSA Title I, Chapter 13, Subchapter 1, Section 4056C, contract negotiation. Second. Do I have a second? Second by Councilor Copeland. Do I have a motion by Councilor Mentor and second by Councilor Copeland to come out of executive session? Any comments to my right? Seeing none. Any to my left? Seeing none. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Gay? Yes. Councilor Doyle? Yes. Councilor Copeland? Yes. Councilor Minthorn? Yes. Councilor Smart? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. The motion passes 7 0. We're now out of executive session. Do I have a report? No report, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. So I have a motion by Councilor Minthorn, second by Councilor Gay to adjourn. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Gay? Yes. Councilor Doyle? Yes. Councilor Copeland? Yes. Councilor Minthorn? Yes. Councilor Smart and Councilor Johnston. Yes. The motion passes 7 0. We are adjourned.